Well, hello there, and welcome to another redstone tutorial slash showcase kind of thing. It's my usual short tutorials where I show you how something is built, but I don't actually rebuild it for you. Um, I know I said I was going to have more polished videos soon, but like I said in that vlog, I'm going to start those in a week or two. But this is a design that I just came up with, and I really want to show it off. It's too small for a polished video, so as sort of a send-off, to my unedited videos before they start in a couple weeks I'm gonna start my unedited videos so yeah uh, or I'm gonna do another unedited video I mean see this is why I'm starting scripts anyway basically I was playing around with the new observer block from 111 and I realized it could be used for something that I had tried to make using traditional buds a long time ago and I could never really get it to work right but I don't know if just coming back to it with fresh eyes is what made it work or if the observer block is needed. I don't know, but I got it to work and I'm really happy about that. So I want to show you guys. Ignore the big squid farm in the background and everything else in the testing world. This line is all you need to know about. So this right here is an ice farm. Um, so let me show you, in case you don't know, what an observer block does. It's basically... <coughs> oh, wow. Sorry, recording at night as usual. Uh, anyway, it's basically a bud in a box. So, for those who don't know, a bud is a block update detector. Um, and that means anytime a block changes near it, it will detect that. So, normally you have to use quasi-connectivity exploits and some either really big machines or else pretty loud ones. This is a single block that not only can it detect block updates, but it's silent and it can be pushed by pistons, which is pretty cool. So let me show you what I mean by that. When you place it down, as you saw before, whatever direction I face, this part faces towards me. So this little pad or button or whatever you want to call it, it looks like a pad to me. This little pad area is the input. This little hole area is the output. And so if we have redstone here, then every time I put a block here, it pulses very shortly. It's really hard to see. It's so fast. Um, it's easier to see if I put a piston here. So if I put a block, it pulses. It pulses. And it gives off a one signal strength one tick pulse which is important because it was impossible to do one tick pulses without pistons before um a one redstone tick is actually two game ticks but this is one game tick pulse and that's very important for this design so basically this is an ice farm now obviously i'm in the desert in my creative testing world so being in the desert means that there's no um, you know, there's no ice that's going to form naturally, but this design will work if you build it in a cold biome. So any snowy biome, like a taiga or whatever. So anywhere that ice can naturally freeze. So in those biomes, water source blocks will freeze randomly into ice. Now normally you have to go and harvest that yourself with a silk touch pick, and you're still going to have to silk touch these, but this will store, I think, 24 or so, something like that blocks for you automatically without you even having to afk as long as someone is loading this thing it will automatically uh harvest the ice for you so since we're in the desert and it won't freeze naturally let me just show you um so if i do that it's gonna push it over there and yeah so if you do this and it's just gonna keep going right and every time a block freezes here, it's going to push it. Now, um, the way this works over here uh, is the observer block is solid, right? And so is obviously this sandstone. Pistons, however, are technically transparent blocks. And that's important because blocks that are uh, water sources, but which are covered by a solid block, will never freeze. So by having this here and this observer block here, these two water sources will never freeze, and thus every time this turns to air, 
the water sources will flow together to create another infinite source that can freeze again later. And so that makes sure that this continues going forever. Um, but yeah. So as you can see, there's just two more blocks left in this row. And the reason I do it in two rows like that is the limit that a piston can push is about 12 blocks. And if this reaches that limit, it can't push anymore, and so it ends up uh, getting stuck. And so there's an auto shutoff up here, but I figured why shut off at 12 when you can just push it up and go again. So if I push it over here, we have about 11. And now if we push this up, you'll see it actually automatically moves it up to the next row. And so we can continue freezing, and every time it freezes, it'll still put up another one. So yeah, so this will give you two rows filled with ice blocks, uh, automatically harvested, so you don't have to AFK, you don't have to wait around, you don't have to do anything. You just have to be somewhere where this chunk is being loaded, and it will automatically work. Now to prevent it from going into an infinite loop, which is what would happen if this reaches the end, because um, that'll be the end of the pistons limit, and so it'll actually not be able to push anymore, and so without being able to push, there'll be an ice block here, and it won't be able to um, to pull the ice block from here. So an ice block will get stuck, and then it'll continue pushing it up and down, and every time it does, it's going to trigger this, bud, uh, this observer block. Uh, and so it goes into an infinite loop. So to prevent that, we have an auto shutoff switch. So if we have the um, ice, and it hasn't been harvested in a while, and it gets to the end here, it's going to trigger this observer block, which creates a one tick pulse into this sticky piston with a redstone block. Now since it's a one tick pulse, this piston will drop the redstone block when it, uh, when it extends, but then the next time it extends and retracts, it'll pull the redstone block back, so it creates a T flip flop. In this case, it's pulling the redstone block right next to the uh, initial piston of our system, and therefore it's keeping it extended. And so with it extended like that, even if there's a block down there, it's not going to trigger this uh, whole system to loop again, because it's not going to pull it up. So when this freezes, it's going to trigger the system once, but it won't do anything because it's not going to move the block up. And so then that frozen block is just going to stay there, that ice block. And so it shuts itself off because otherwise it would be very loud and cycle constantly. Um, and then it also turns itself back on. So if I come over here and harvest this, you're going to want to harvest this block last. You don't have to, but you're going to want to. Um, so you harvest everything and then you harvest this block and that's going to trigger this bud again, this observer again. I'm always going to be calling it buds. Uh, you trigger this observer again, which is going to drop the block off over here, and that'll allow that to retract. And when it retracts, that's going to create a block update, and that'll trigger the system so that it'll actually pull the block and push it over here. So if I break this, you'll see it goes back, and I put it back into this little ice tape or ice storage unit here. And then it shut itself off again, because in this case I only broke that one. Uh, now if there's no frozen ice there and you break this, that is fine. It'll uh, retract the piston, and it'll just go back to being what it always was. So it resets itself perfectly every time. It'll never lock up. It'll never freeze. Um, so yeah. And of course if you want to hide the redstone because you're ashamed of it, you can always just build a design around this. You can put blocks pretty much everywhere uh, that doesn't have redstone block except this area here. But you can still put blocks down here. You can put blocks up behind stuff if you want to you know, cover up since you can see through the ice. You can put a design back here. You know, I'm not the best uh, builder, but you know, you can do stuff like that. You could even put a block here. And a block here, and a block here, and cover up everything so that from this side, where you'll be harvesting, you don't see anything. Yeah. 
So, really cool. Uh, compact, efficient, fully automatic uh, ice storage system. And, yeah, so let's go see how this works. So, uh, i got to break open these. So we have the water source. You saw that. Um, this observer block is has the input on that middle water piece, the one that's going to freeze. That goes into a 4-tick repeater, just to make it a little longer. Uh, and also to uh, increase the signal strength from 1 to 15. That signal initially goes into the top piston to pick up the block, pick up the ice from the floor. Then two ticks later, it comes in through this repeater into the side piston to pull the block over to the side. And then four ticks after the initial signal, so two ticks after this one, uh, the regular piston, which is the only one that's not a sticky piston on this side, uh, will push the block out. And that'll create your first row. Uh, and then down on this end, we just have a bud block. Or sorry, a observer. I told you I'm going to keep calling it that. You have an observer. Uh, and so this is out 12 blocks, I believe. But let me just count to make sure. 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes. 12 blocks out, you have this observer with its input facing where the ice will move. And you have that going into a block, underneath which is a dot of redstone dust. And then next to that is a block. So whenever, a, um, whenever this block gets updated, like that, uh, it will push the block up. So when this moves, it'll push the ice up. And then up here, we have basically the same circuit. We just have it turned around so that... Um, oops, I, can, I shouldn't have broken that. Um, we have this turned around like this. It's the same circuit. It's just facing a different way so that this input is down here, where the ice will move to on the top row. Uh, it outputs a signal to this block, which powers this dust, which powers this piston. So that means that... If there's room, whenever a block comes here, it's going to push it. So these are just smart pistons, except normal smart pistons use usually a torch uh, that goes through the block you're pushing. But this is a transparent block, so you can't do that because the torch signal won't actually go through the block. So instead, we're just using these observers to trigger automatically from a block update. Um, so yeah, so that's how we get these two piston tapes. I mean, I guess they're not technically piston tapes, because usually tapes are uh, circular, and this is not, but they're two piston lines of ice. And now at the end here, we have that observer block, which you can see through the ice is has its input facing towards the block, towards the ice here. And then on the other side of that, we have a sticky piston facing back towards the original piston with a redstone block on it. Now... When you build this, you're not going to have any blocks here. You're not going to have ice here. So you're going to want to build this like this. You're going to want to build this with the redstone block one block away from this sticky piston. That way... Well, I should have done that. So it's going to be like that normally. So you want to build it like that. So that way, when the first ice block comes and hits this it will be in the right state and lock the system. If you build it like this originally, without the ice there, then when the ice comes and gets to the end here, it's actually going to unlock the system. And actually, you're never going to get this working, because if you build it like this, without the ice there, you're just going to have the system fully locked. And you're, it's never going to unlock, because you're never going to get anything over there. So yeah, just build it with this redstone block over here, and nothing over here. So like that, not like this. Okay? But yeah. And that is the shutoff switch. So that is how all of this works. It's nice and compact. Uh, if I take away these walls that we don't need, then it is one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five. 
by one, two, three. So four by five by three, not counting the storage. And the storage itself is literally just a piston line, and it's designed to be big. So, yeah, four by five by three for an automatic ice harvester, not bad at all. all right. So, like I said, look out for my professional polished videos, my new series coming out probably next Monday. Um, until then, I might upload another short unedited video if I have something really good that I want to show off. But probably nothing until next week. Uh, and those are going to be much more polished, and then once a week after that. So, until next time, keep harvesting your ice, keep your drinks cold, and keep redstoning.